everybody and welcome back to my sci-fi build series. In today's video we're going to be looking at robots. Everything from small little drones that you would see zipping through the skies through to gigantic big robots that would pound deep into the ground below. But before we do that, if you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing because that will help me out a ton. Also, if you're interested in having a closer look at any of the builds featured in today's video, I have provided a world download over on my Kofi page, and you can download this uh, over on there. A uh, link for that will be down in the description. Okay, let's get to it then, shall we? Okay, kicking us off at number one, we have drones. Now, drones are the smallest robots that we're featuring in today's video, but they are also one of the most important because they feature really heavily in my Random Craft series. And here we have Drone 1, Drone 2, and Drone 3. Now, Drone 3 uses a hopper and an end rod, so we have this nice little gun. And then we have our four iron trapdoors comparator on the top. On the drone here, we have some iron trapdoors. We're using open fence gates to sort of make these little arms that hold onto the rotor blades. And then we're using a custom player head. Now this custom player head is from minecraftheads.com and it's called Cosmo. A link for that will be down in the description. Uh, but you don't have to use a custom player head. You could use a, a, a skull or any anything else. And then for this drone, we're using signs with a nice little pattern on the side, uh, glow ink and some light gray dye to make these little skids and a comparator and again, trapdoors. Now, I've seen a few people make drones like these but using lower slabs. Please don't do that. If you do that, I will hunt you down and I will throw a box at you. Next up at number two, we have personal robot assistants. Now, PRAs, as I call them, are tiny little robots. As you can see, we have four here to go through, and they're very, very simple little multi-block creatures. So uh, up first, we have this one here. This is like a little like a mono wheel dog type thing. He carries stuff to and from places, sort of a little servant robot, and we have some Growers on the sides, which we're using uh, glow ink and I think that's magenta dye. And then we're using the Cosmo head. Again, you don't have to use a Cosmo head. You could use a regular skull. The wither skull looks pretty nice with them. And then next to our little carrier, we have the floating security bot. Now the security bot uh, floats up in the sky. He has this little end rod, which we're using as like a little energy gem that keeps him up in the air and he is using levers for his shoulders going into some walls and then into some iron uh, rails and then a blast furnace for his chest custom player head for his head and then he is holding this sort of big stun baton slash staff and the reason that I have them as stun batons is really just that it's a non-lethal sort of weapon obviously robots are programmed not to harm but they're not programmed to not incapacitate and then next to our floating security bot, we have a ground security bot. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same, but he's using a little grindstone as a wheel. And we could, of course, use our iron bars to give him hands and give him a stun baton as well if we really wanted. But I kind of like him just empty handed, like he knows judo or something, you know, <laughs> robo judo, which is now my favorite word. And then next to him, we have an observer typed head one so rather than using a custom head or a skull you can use an observer rather than using levers we are using trapdoors and hoppers so we kind of has these thicker sort of pauldron-esque type arms uh, other than that though it is the same we're still using a grindstone still using an anvil still using a blast furnace still using a little iron bar wall and then stun baton using lightning rods and of course he has this little redstone torch on the top because without it he kind of looks a little bit boring and naked so, you know, put a little redstone torch in his head as an antenna. Beautiful. At number three, we have the Charles bot. Yes, he's big and he's ugly. It is my Charles bot. Now, Charles bot features really heavily in season one of Random Craft, where he is Enigma's au pair or nanny, sort of the guardian figure of Enigma to make sure that he doesn't get up to any mischief. He kind of keeps him on the straight and narrow as it were, because otherwise Enigma would just go off and do his own thing because he's unpredictable like that. And he's a really simple thing to build. We're just using some stairs and some slabs for his feet. Then a full polished block into a grindstone for the legs, full blocks for the pelvis, and then some stairs just to get this sort of V shape of the chest. And rather than having sort of a head on the top, 
I opted to sort of just put a pair of eyes up there and kind of make this little bit a nose. So you can kind of see he's a... Uh, yeah, he's very ugly. Uh, and then we're using walls for arms and they go into dispensers for his hands. And then we're using again a little redstone torch as an antenna and a trapdoor in the center. So we get this nice little bowed feature running through the middle there just to add a little bit more depth uh, to the overall build. And that is the Charles bot. Very, very simple build, but also really, really fun. Next up at number four, we have the Strider. Now, there's no grosser misuse of a scientist's power than making a robot that literally just walks for him so he doesn't have to, and that is what the Strider bot does. So you just stand inside there, and the idea is that it would walk to and from. It could carry things that you can't be bothered to carry, and stuff like that. The original design of this was originally from one of my favourite villains of all time, Dr. Robotnik from Sonic, and it was based off of a machine that was featured in that series. I don't remember which game, but yeah, it was uh, it was something that he used, uh, and I kind of wanted to recreate something similar in Minecraft. So again, we're using stairs and slabs for the feet. We're using some deep slate walls to kind of make this like, little rubberized section. And then we have these V-shaped legs where we're using stairs and walls again to sort of get this sort of nice arced shape. And then we've got these sort of uh, glow streams covered over in trapdoors as sort of heated up sort of uh, actuators to move the legs backwards and forwards. They go into this like, nice little hip joint here where we're using a wall and a pair of stairs so it kind of looks like it's going underneath the blocks to add extra depth. And then on the top we're using some of our pistons. So we have this nice little trim that runs around the glass so it kind of looks like it's like pinched in and gripped on, which uh, is a really nice feature. And again, an antenna, just in case you need to remote control this thing because that is kind of more like a robotic vehicle than anything else, I think. At number five, we have the Crabbot Mark I. Now, this is the Mark I Crabbot, as the name suggests, and I built this back in around 2017, maybe 2018. It was it was quite quite some time ago. Uh, the very original model, which I called the version zero or the alpha version, uh, was pretty much just all out of quartz blocks uh, back in the day, and uh, I ended up having to do a large update to it. I wanted to have these nice little smooth red sandstone legs and then we're using walls to kind of add a little bit more of a metallic look this section here was supposed to be a, a gun and i think we could do a slightly better job a little upgrade to that i don't think it would be too difficult and then we have a dispenser on the top here and a dispenser in the bottom to dispense things out of so we could remove this and just use it as like a rocket launcher and a couple of skulls on the top so they're kind of like headlights or eyes to our crab bot and that is the Mark I Crabbot. However, after watching Sir Durple's video, which he has also made one on, on robots, where he featured a slightly modified version of my Crabbot, I have decided to do a real update to the Crabbot called the Crabbot Mark II. So let's take a look, shall we? Because at number six, we have the Crabbot Mark II. So as you can see, the Mark II version of the Crabbot has had a lot of upgrades. We have this large, big eye in the center now that is blue rather than using a pair of skeleton skulls. We have two machine gun mandibles or energy gun mandibles that are sticking out of the bottom. So we have freed up our sort of dispenser to fire rockets at things. We're now using blackstone to look more like rubber, connecting up the legs to the main part. A little bit more detailing on the legs now, now that we have access to chains and more deep states, we can get this two tone in. And then we have made it ever so slightly longer and added in this fin using a blast furnace in the center like an exhaust, pair of stairs, and that is the Crabbot Mark II. And if you're interested in knowing how to make the Crabbot, I have a tutorial up on YouTube on how to make this model, and the link for that will be up on the screen. Yes, yeah, there it is. Huh, what a coincidence. Next up at number seven, we have the Egg Copter. Now, for those of you that are new around here, you might be wondering, hey, why is this called the Egg Copter? And that's because I built this machine in retaliation to a prank that was played on me during Random Craft Season 1. And the Egg Copter was built over Nimrel's base and just dropped hundreds upon hundreds of chickens down all over her builds. 
So that's why we have chests featured on this build. So as you can see, the chests go down, they go inside these dispensers here, and we've deactivated the machine. But if we were to put that that way around, there we go, you can hear the ticking. And that would be throwing eggs out down towards the ground. But because they hit these end rods, they just almost immediately spawn chickens. And then you just get a rain of chickens so for the main body of the egg copter, as you can see, we're using a nice crab bot clamshell design that we have run across that is an Entech thing. You'll see that featured quite heavily across many of my builds. And then coming off, we have these nice little rotor blade areas, similar to um, the drones where we kind of have the little rotor blades, but these are much larger ones. Uh, attach these big engines and then we're using again iron trapdoors to make the actual blades themselves and then round the back we have another pair of double chests for more egg stock now it's not just the deactivated egg blasters that differ this model to the original one we also have these energy cannons sticking out of the front as these little sort of almost reverse mandibles uh, there they are over on the crab bot and here they are on the egg bot so now you can bombard your friends with science at number eight, we have the Battle Mech. So this here is the Battle Mech. Now this Battle Mech was heavily inspired by one featured in Sir Derple's video on robots. I mentioned that earlier, and a link for that video actually will be up in the top corner, right about, yeah, right there it is. And in that video, Sir Derple featured one of these Battle Mechs, and I saw that and I thought, huh, well, you took my crab bot design, I'm gonna take your battle bot. Goddamn panda. I'm just kidding, uh, he knows I love him. So on our battle mech, we're using our little clam crab bot shell design. And then off of that, we're using these large two arms as massive guns. Because, you know, massive guns. And then that goes down to very similar legs to what's on the Strider. So it goes down in a sort of shallower V to what's on the Strider. Slightly larger feet because there's a lot more weight at the top on this one. And again, these go into these actuator little areas here and then into the hips and then there's this really thin section here so that the top can sort of pivot around yes i'm aware it can't really it's just make believe okay go with it and then on the top we have these two large sort of energy proton gatling guns that would like mow down anybody that's in your wake you know cows and stuff like that if you just want copious amounts of beef and things um you can use these and then we have the little area to get in so you can stand in there and uh, control it. Now, as you can see, this does not feature an antenna, uh, so it cannot be remote controlled. And that's really just for security purposes. You don't want this falling into the wrong hands. It's definitely one way you would need to put in some sort of ID card to operate it, I think. At number nine, we have the Entech Strider Shard. Now for the eagle-eyed amongst you, you may recognize this as the Entech Redstone Shop. And yes, I definitely did use it over on Random Craft Season 1 for my little redstone shop. However, the whole idea behind the Entech Shard was that it was sort of like a strider that could walk from A to B and set up like a little subdivision of Entech. You know, if you were like mining somewhere or something like that, these would crop up and sort of act as a base of operations. So as a result, you can go inside the shard. Uh, we have got the same sort of layout in here as what we have over on Random Craft at the moment. But you could change this out, pull in a second floor. You could even fit in a third floor and put a little bunk room up there if you wanted. On the outside though, the Entech Strider shard looks a lot like our crab bot. So we are using our Blackstone to connect up these gigantic crab legs. And then when they're attached here, they are going into some walls, some slabs and some stairs to kind of make it look like they're gripped in. We've got these two large energy sort of eyes. The mouth is sort of where the door is. And then on the top, we've got this big sort of super computery looking thing up on there that sort of acts as like this large energy uh, beacon. I think on Random Craft, I actually do have a beacon in there. So it beams up into the sky to let the rest of Entech know where this particular shard is, as well as some basic little antennas. And that is the Entech Strider Shard. And finally, at number 10, we have Big Bot. Now you may be wondering why it's called Big Bot. And well, it's because it's just really big. Just a very big machine. I'm a man of simple words. So yes, this is Big Bot. 
It is the base of operations for everything that is important at Entec and the home of our bot. Now, there's lots and lots of blocks that we're using on the big bot. We're using cauldrons here to add in this nice little metal sort of area attaching to the legs. And the legs on big bot are important because they don't work the same as the crab bot. See, on big bot, the legs would lift straight up into the air and then this little hinge would move forwards and then it would drop down again. And that's why it has these extremely large oversized gripping feet. And I was really happy with how these feet came out, these little like gripping sort of metal looking things. I really like the design of. And the idea is that they would sort of pinch in and grip onto a surface, sort of like a limp it in a way. Now, Big Bot is probably one of my most favorite builds that I've made robot wise in Minecraft over the past recent years. And I'm interested to know what you would do with it. Now, you could let me know down in the comments below, or better yet, you could download the world down in the description below and then do your own version of Big Bot, maybe change the blocks up or something like that. And if you want, you can then share that with me over on the Random Fandom Discord, and a link for that will be down in the description below. And that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found these builds inspirational, and I hope that they serve you well if you do so wish to download the world. And if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing because that helps me out a ton. And if you're interested in seeing more sci-fi builds from me, there is a playlist up on the screen right now that will show you a bunch of different sci-fi things that I have made so you can make them. Okay, I'm going to go and try and find a new home for Big Bot over on RandomCraft, so I will see you next time. Enigma out.